It is basic human nature for people to oppress and destroy one another. Except for a few short periods of enlightenment, the history of the world has been dominated by war, oppression, and heartache. Admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship. The United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights was established over two centuries ago. It inspired hope for people all over the world for deliverance from oppression. But the Constitution, in its original intent, has only been rarely understood and observed. It has fostered liberty, prosperity, and happiness for many millions of people, but not for all. Today, governments the world over are raging like a wildfire out of control and preparing to crush everything in their path. Today, your children are taught in schools that the Constitution itself is a document of oppression and evil. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Constitution in its original intent and documents like it in nations around the world are the only safeguards the people have left to protect them from uncontrolled tyranny and bondage. The Constitution attempts to control governments and protect the people. It recognizes the God-given rights that people of all races and nations have. And it tells the governments that they cannot interfere with those rights. But now these documents are hanging by a thread. The fire they kindled are about to be extinguished. If the people knew what they have and what they are about to lose, they would reject the propaganda they are brainwashed with and rally to the cause and stand up for their rights. Let's discuss the First Amendment outlined in the Bill of Rights. Even if many of you know and cherish the Bill of Rights, many of you don't know, don't understand, and don't care until it will be too late. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. You have a right to freedom of religion. You have a right to believe what you want to believe, and no government has a right to force you or to force teach your children anything contrary to your conscience. You have a right to freedom of speech. You have a right to say anything you believe, no matter how unpopular. This goes hand in hand with freedom of the press. You likewise have a right to write and print any opinion you have, no matter how unpopular. And you do not need any press credentials, so-called, or permission of any kind to do it. You have a right to peaceably assemble. And as long as it is peaceable, no government has a right to restrict you. The government has no right to establish free speech restriction zones, nor to deny you permission. You also have a right to petition the government for a redress of wrongs, and no government has the right to deny you. Everyone should learn and be familiar with the story of Anne Marbury Hutchinson. In the 17th century, she was a woman in Boston who exercised her right to believe and worship God according to the dictates of her conscience. And she freely spoke her mind concerning what she believed. Because of this, she ran afoul of the religious leaders and the institutions of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. She was prosecuted and persecuted, convicted of heresy, and exiled to Rhode Island. Eventually, she relocated to the New Netherlands, in what is presently the Bronx in New York City.
though it was sparsely populated then. She had good relations with the Native Americans in Rhode Island and felt she could do the same in her new home. Unfortunately, the Dutch were waging war against the Native Americans. In 1643, in an act of revenge, the Siwanoi tribe massacred Anne and six of her eleven children on her homestead, and they took her youngest daughter, Susanna, captive. Susanna Hutchinson was raised for several years as a family member of their tribe, until her oldest brother, who had remained behind in Boston, negotiated her release. As for her mother Anne, at the time of her massacre, some of the religious authorities in Boston celebrated her death as divine punishment for her defiance of their authority. Although Anne left no written records, most of what we know of her exact viewpoints come primarily of her enemies. The story of Anne Hutchinson created a lasting legacy, and her example was used as an inspiration when crafting the First Amendment to the Constitution, that there be no state-sponsored church. Today, in front of the Capitol building of Massachusetts, there is a statue of Anne Hutchinson and her daughter. A river running through the Bronx borough, the site of her massacre, is named the Hutchinson River. The LDS Church Apostles Parley and Orson Pratt and all of their family members are direct descendants of Susanna Hutchinson, who was taken captive and raised by the Siwanok tribe after the massacre of her family. Parley P. Pratt was himself imprisoned for eight months in 1838 to 39 by the crime syndicate which controlled the state of Missouri. One more important point needs to be remembered concerning the First Amendment. Mandatory participation in public schooling is actually illegal under the First Amendment. Government-sponsored and government-controlled churches are prohibited under the First Amendment. Why? Because people have a right to believe and teach their families according to their conscience. The government-controlled schools today forbid even any mention of God in any context, unless it is to defame God. And they force your children to learn things contrary to your beliefs, in violation of your conscience. This is deliberately intended to bring down civilization as we know it. It was no accident that your own children were to be raised by your worst enemies until they became hostile strangers to you in your own home. It has become so bad that millions of young adults are almost incapable of taking care of themselves in the cold, cruel world. That is true especially of the males. They are woefully unprepared to survive with even the basic skills previous generations took for granted. The corrupt judicial system and their schemes and evil designs have twisted the original intent of the First Amendment into something unrecognizable to the framers of the Bill of Rights. They have essentially nullified the First Amendment into the dustbins of history. So the government no longer runs the churches? Big deal. People go to church for one or two hours a day a week and then send their kids to school for six to eight hours a day, five days a week, under the penalty of a multitude of laws, and then think somehow they still have First Amendment rights. If the people want to peaceably assemble to hold a rally, they must apply for a permit who can be denied based on the whims of the ones granting permission. Then they are often restricted to free speech zones, and the people still run the risk of harassment and imprisonment by law enforcement and getting scorched by the press, who, make no mistake about it, are almost completely controlled by the establishment. All of the major churches are completely controlled by them too, if the truth be known. 
There are no exceptions. In the near future, we can also expect a social credit system based on the communist system in China. People in China who have a low social credit score are denied passports, driver's licenses, and business licenses. They can even be denied plane and train tickets if they dare express unpopular beliefs and opinions. We have already seen that begin to happen in the United States and the Western nations. If you don't want to put a message you personally don't subscribe to on a cake, then you too can be denied a business license. You too can be sued for your home. Social credit systems already exist here. They are just not yet in your face and out in the open like in China. At this point, the First Amendment may exist on paper only, but you must remember that it still exists. It may be hanging by a thread, but it is still the supreme law of the land, and it is still on the statute books. Just because judges and officials everywhere violate the law does not mean they have yet overthrown the law. They do not yet have enough power to do that. It is still binding and it is the only thing that separates you from tyranny and oppression. So there is still hope. It is our responsibility to know the Bill of Rights ourselves, so it is also written in our hearts. We also have a responsibility to teach others who have been brainwashed into believing it is something evil. In your internet chats, try to teach them in a non-threatening way the Constitution protects their rights, too. Don't give up on them, even if they seem hostile. Try not to insult them, even if they insult you. It is hard, and none of us are perfect, but look forward to betterment, and don't look back at our past failures. If you interact with immigrants who are unfamiliar with our laws, strike up casual conversations with them about the Bill of Rights and let them know it is an essential key to their future too, and their prosperity and their happiness. Most importantly, in sentiment with the Founding Fathers, know that the Constitution only works with a moral and religious people. It is wholly unsuited for any other people. We are coming quickly to a point where it will be too late. There is a new day dawning, the devil can see events happening behind the veil, and he can see what is coming where we can't. He knows his time is short, and he has demanded of all his servants to accelerate their plans, even at the expense of his kingdom. So even though the wicked will rage, their time is short, and their fury will altogether subside until they are no more. But for now, grow as much food and store as much clothing and essential goods as you can. Store the best books. Sharpen your skills and read the scriptures every day. Pray always for deliverance from bondage and learn to live by every word which proceeds from the mouth of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that among the inhabitants of the earth which shall remain to possess the land, there shall arise statesmen indeed, who will guide them to a wise fraternity between nations and point out to them those principles and policies of intercourse which will destroy the motive of war. And these people who thus lay the axe at the root, which is the greed of nations, are the peacemakers which shall be called the children of God. For they shall be my people, and I will be their God, and there shall be no more war. And when I shall consume the wicked as stubble, and leave them neither root nor branch in the earth, as saith the prophet Malachi, then shall these things be.